Oh, and finally, something we get clipped. Like, we've been so funny. There's nothing we've been able to clip from these shows. Yeah, you've been sucking lately, Chris. I love my mother. I hate my brother. So let's Someone says, speaking of Mario. And have a smoke. Some good fucking bread. Um... <clears throat> I said, let's get after it, and I meant it. Your yeah. questions and comments. I'm Chris Cuomo. Are we ever going to get any of ours in there? I, mean, we, I don't know, man. We're trying, though. I, get to, I know people are trying. Subscribing and following here, the Chris Cuomo Project. Look, the beauty of it is I do this not just to you, but for you and about you. So what do you think? What do you like? What do you not like? What do you agree with, disagree with? Let's get after it. You already said that, you Guido idiot. The Chomo Project. I I, I still can't get over that. I who what, was it? Was it Pessy that spotted that? Yeah. It was yeah. So I was like, fucking. That was a beautiful fucking spot. Okay. Man. I'm this more interested in DreamWorks. Let's start things off with some YouTube comments. We have a lot from the audience, so here we go. Hang on. You hey, 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 who, hang on. You forgot the, the third stinger. From your interview with Adam Carolla, uh, Donald Navy Goat 23 writes, I've watched Tucker for years. He's the only person on Fox who defended you after your firing. Go back and watch the tape. It's true. He did. We played it on the show. He goes, I don't like Chris Cuomo, but this is a really, for standing up for his brother, the most human thing he's ever done. That's what you're going to fire him for? I remember watching that. <laughs> to be fair, though, Tucker did also fucking rip oh, off this dude a lot. That's not true. <laughs> I know he did. We, I saw it. Uh, Hannity was supportive as well. Okay, so two people. You know what he meant. And if I were you, uh, I would call, first of all, Nobody came after me as much as Tucker Carlson did. <laughs> Agreed. It got to him. It got to him, bro. You could tell. He's shell-shocked. It got to him. That's why they all hate this guy. That's why the mere mention of yes. him makes them all fucking fit. Okay. Yeah. Now, do I think he did it gratuitously? Absolutely. Did he do it because it worked with uh, the people who follow him? Yeah. No. Chris. Hey, Chris. 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 Before you would. You don't need an earpiece for the show, bud. You know. Oh God! Why does he have an earpiece? Your producer's on camera, why? so you could just cut to the producer telling you stuff. Why is he having? He doesn't want to wear headphones. He wants to be cool. Because of his hair. You're right. Oh my God! You're right. He doesn't want a headphone because I don't want that shit messing on my hair. And if I wear headphones, I'm gonna look like an amateur hour. Bro, I'm gonna look uh, like uh, some kind of fucking dork or something. Rogan wears headphones. He's the biggest podcast on the planet. No, but you see, you don't understand. These are fresh plugs, and if I put the headphones <laughs> over them, they're going to stab my scalp. It's tender like a baby. Yeah, the doctor said don't put nothing on my head. Do I think he says and does most things? I've been, I've been sleeping sitting up like the elephant man, so I don't even touch my scalp <laughs> to the bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm a human being. I'm not Fredo. <laughs> um, do I think that if I were to see him in person, especially right now... I would knock would him the fuck out. Uh, you th you think for you think he would? No. In person, especially right now, he would talk to me the way he talks about me. Absolutely not. He's doing the he tough guy to thing. Face. Say Holy it to my fuck! Face. He's, He's doing, doing the Italian to... guy in any hypothetical situation. Say He's doing it to the my bit. Face. He's doing the bit, Chris. I would say to your face. You want to know why? You might kick my ass. You probably would. But here, nah, maybe not. You know what? Let me not say that. You might not kick my ass. But if you did. If you hit me first, curse over words, I would sue you. And that's how that will go. <laughs> you idiot. No, no, no. I would, can I, I would have you arrested. Yeah. Then I would sue you. And especially right now, he would talk to me the way he talks about me. Absolutely not. Why? Okay. Does that matter to you? I don't know. Should, but maybe not. You won't say it on my face. Is, that's a threat. You're saying under threats of violence, yeah. people lie to you and don't tell you the truth because you're a meathead is what you're saying. Yeah. and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say it's not a threat. It's still like this. I, I hate this argument people always make when if you have a show, let's say, right, like it, and, and e-fags are always like this, right? Like you, if, if I criticize somebody or you criticize somebody that we don't necessarily have like beef with, but it gets back to them. 
And then it's like, oh, you wouldn't say that shit to my, like, if I saw you somewhere in person, you wouldn't just, and I'd be like, yeah, because I don't run up to people immediately and, and start screaming out all my minor gripes with them. That's usually not what I do, especially if I don't hate you. So the, the whole argument of you wouldn't say that to my face, it's like, well, I would if you pressed me to say it, but... Like, if you're saying I wouldn't back up what I'm saying, but he's trying to imply, like, yeah, I'm sure if I ran into him, he'd be polite. Yeah, I'm polite to people I don't like either. I'm not trying to have N-word moments every moment of my life, you know? Ray Wombat says, Tucker <laughs> Tucker needs to pull up, is what Cuomo's saying. Yeah, he needs to pull up. Eric July was telling people to do that. Yeah, I know, I saw. Was it Dick Masterson he said to pull up? Yeah, to, Dick, he needed to pull up, yeah. <clears throat> what does that mean, man? You want to fight Dick um, Masterson? Because he's I very frail. I don't think, think he'll fight why. you. They were defending. I'm defending me. They don't even know me. Defending me as a way of beating up on CNN and showing. We have a story about you that we can't tell, and it bothers me. And how uh, this is some manifest. You know which one, and it really bothers me because right now is the perfect time that would completely undercut his entire argument. I'm not going to because we keep our word, but the station of what the left does that allows them to beat up the left. You know, I mean, I don't see that as as, uh, as angelic or as compassionate as you do. Um, but look, I'm not in the beef business. By the way, angelic or compassionate, the guy only said, hey, he stood up for you. You made everything else up in your head, bud. Mm -hmm. The question was, hey, he defended you. Okay, and I'm not in the animosity business. You're, you're not in the beef business. What are you talking about? You pushed plenty of mRNA vaccines. Nah, he's a veal guy. Remember his fake 100 pound dumbbell that he, that he just tricep? <laughs> That's right, the 100 pound. People give me shit and come at me all the time. I think they do it because it works for them. I think people write nasty shit about me and try to expose me. Um, what if you're just an asshole? Chris, 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 we have more views on you on fucking Rumble than you have being someone who's been CNN for a decade has on YouTube. Chris, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. We're punching down, right? You know that. You know we're punching down right now, right, Chris? Are you aware that, that that's your, you're, you're not. What's his best video? done like what's his own? uh i can look the I bird see, i want to see what is it's got to be the bird it's got to be the bird so if we go to videos and we go to popular let's go to popular uh eight months ago when, all right but that was when he was on when like, he had when he was on tv it but again that was his bill maher thing that he put up but it's not even from his youtube it's from that news show that he had that news nation so show. basically his biggest video that he's done on his own has tucker carlson in the in the in the title Correct. Uh, his biggest videos are him interviewing people. Uh, for example, uh, like interviewing uh, Adam Cor Adam Kroll interviewing him, Neil deGrasse Tyson. But even with Neil deGrasse Tyson, now we're only at 112, you know? Alec Baldwin. Uh, the yeah, Alec you, if you're getting these kind of guests and you're doing those kind of numbers, it's pretty pathetic. Yeah. Alec Baldwin. Uh, Tyler Perry. Jesus Christ, these are really bad, Chris. Jesus fucking Christ, Chris. Went 44K, 35K. Yeah, drops really fast. Shit. Did I lose it? I'm an idiot. Sorry. Sorry. I did it to myself. I lost it. There you there, go. There. As many ways as they can that are negative because it's clickbait and it works for them. And that's just the Yeah, it's the clickbait. That I've Putting made Chris Cuomo in the thing really gets it. us on the algorithm. Now we have a bunch from the YouTube comments of people commenting on the YouTube comments video. <sighs> Tracy Holt wants to know, Chris, how would the House and Senate work with, say, four parties in them? Who would get speaker, et cetera? What is this? Who cares? Why, why would you even pick that question out of all the questions? What's the bird? This is this is like sports radio when they go, hey, what if the Celtics had Chris Bosh? <laughs> I know. Like, I don't, like, they don't. So why are we having this conversation? <laughs> right? It's, I hate hypotheticals. There's nothing worse than somebody's like, hey, would you imagine, right, if like, you know, Joe Montana in his prime, or like, you know, Joe Namath was playing now for like the Dolphins. And you're like, no, it's it's because it's not. It's not real. It's Imagine not real. if like Michael Jordan played <coughs> with LeBron. Yeah. You're, bas I, I, no, you're basically Frankie. You're basically Frankie McDonald going, Imagine if a car went one billion, trillion, trillion, gajillion, million miles an hour. You see what he tweets that shit? Hey, you better stop. That's like 20 minutes of certain people's compound show. <laughs> no. Brew. I might as well talk about what is true. Mom, come on, that might be mean, but, you know. Jerry Jerry writes, Hi, Chris. I used to work at 1285 Avenue of the Americas for 10 years. Docs! I saw you every day getting bagel and coffee. I told you once I speak Dutch like your wife. No way. LOL. I don't eat bagels. I was going to say, that's, <laughs> that's... I haven't had a carb 
since the Twin Towers fell, bud. What is? All right. The only th- okay. you, you know what? I never forget two things: the last ba- bagel I had on two thousand one, and the towers falling down. What about? So, so, what about just saying, "Yeah, that's nice." Yeah. How about be nice? He uh, he later on in the video, I skipped ahead. He gets to voicemails, voice messages. Oh. If you go to fourteen twelve, the last voice message message is one of the funniest things okay. I think I have. Uh, uh, Ever fourteen twelve. Okay. Sounds like yeah. of all the things we've heard from these listeners who that may or may not. You want to call them idiots, didn't you? You want to call them morons, didn't you? We call them morons. We don't fucking hide it. You hide it, you pussy. Be true. I know you're not a bagel guy. I'm not a bagel guy. My wife does not speak Dutch unless she's pulling something over on me. Um, but I I'm not a bagel guy, and I wish these I... bagels would go back to where they. Be- oh, you mean the food? Yeah. So do you think that some just random Guido? Yeah. They thought it was that Chris worked Chris. in finance, yeah. that like dressed like Chris Cuomo was just getting his big on coffee every day. Or I, I think this guy confused him with another reporter that might have a Dutch wife. I bet you if you look up CNN reporter with Dutch wife, you'll get some other guy in CNN. Probably confused him. Appreciate you remembering me, and I love meeting and talking to people. It really bothers my kids and friends um, because they think that I take too much time doing it, but I appreciate... Buddy, there's... You're not that popular. That's no. why you do it. Fourteen twelve, you said. Well, go. I guess good, let's do a few of the voicemails 14, 12. before it. Yeah. Well, uh, there's there's a few after I think too. Uh, but you know, yeah, you know, let's do let's do let's do this one first. Hey, Chris, it's your number one fan. I just wanted to say tattoo. All the, all things, the things you said, said all, all the, the things, things you said, said all <laughs> my head. Oh God, that was. How are they doing with the war going on? Uh, are you still, they still making out and stuff. Congratulations for reaching 100k subscribers on YouTube. I'm so happy for you. And this is not I a real call. Continue to watch the Chris Cuomo project. It's this wife in the other room. Something that I look forward to watching, and it's something that makes my night. See, she sounds like she's got a lot of passion. Remember remember the people that we said would vote for Newsom? It's women like this who watch us for Cuomo because you think he's buff. Yeah. And I just hope that your YouTube channel continues to grow. Amen. So, yeah, congratulations. As a Cuban. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your excitement, and I hope that you're right, uh, and that the reach <sighs> and the resonance continues because that's why we're doing it trying to um, be valuable to as many people as possible uh, in as many ways as possible and working with you and the team to try to find that sweet spot of uh, what works and what helps. What team? Because that's the whole it's point him and this kid. of this. Wow. And uh, I'm happy that you're happy because that's the goal is to be of value to people like you. So thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity and uh, thank you for the feedback. I Fuck appreciate you, Chris. You just that waltzed, was a nice call. You just waltzed into 100 k subs. Okay. Yep. It took me by Kevin surprise. Nash had to sacrifice <laughs> just... his son to the Illuminati to get 100 k subs. You got off so light. I'm just making sure that I'm, I'm dropping in the nice ones. I'm convinced so the can, one at 1412 is, she, this, is uh, uh, Andrew. Also... Okay, let's do 14. I'm convinced it's Andrew calling and doing a voice. Called before and, and serenaded our voicemail account. Really? Yeah. I do think it's also instructive that you note when you put in a nice call. <laughs> I, I'm trying desperately to balance this out because I don't, I'm not trying to put in only mean calls. I'm trying to... Because p- can there's I not guess? a lot of good calls. Can I guess they're mostly mean calls? Oh, I bet you. Chris, I bet you. I was thinking Chris puts people up to making these calls for him, but I bet it's this guy. But has, things that- uh, this guy has to fake the stuff to make Chris feel good. Yeah. I bet that chick is a friend of this guy's, right? Like, I guarantee he's like a sister-in-law or something that he was like, hey, could you just, like, call this voicemail and say congrats on, you know, 100K subs? Make up some stupid name, like Tattoo. <laughs> and just call and say that. <laughs> they could have come up with a better name. <laughs> like, I, be- I think you're they right. Were watching, uh, they were watching <laughs> Fan- Fan- Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island. <laughs> And he's like, turn the TV down. My, my sister-in-law is going to call Chris. I got a work thing to do. Your yeah, fucking sister-in-law's name's probably Tatiana. He goes, just show yeah. your tattoo. Yeah. And then he's just like, yeah, I'm trying to balance it out, Chris. But don't worry. We got plenty of people to love you, too. People pose questions or challenge your points of view. You were the one who told me when we started I, this. I, I don't want to hear just love. I don't that is hear- true. 
That's absolutely true. And it should but be I an easy job. To get one, some. because I'm <laughs> provocative for people for whatever reason. And two, um, I think people are more inclined to comment on things that they're pissed about than that they yeah, no know, shit. like or are mildly interested in. It's literally a universal truth we've known for decades. There's so many fucking, literally, no, it's, there's a phrase for it. It's nobody calls the store to tell them the milk was fresh. I think that it's an extreme inclination. All right, well, here's, here's another nice one. Um, I really, you know, I've been listening to you for years. I really. This is the one, right? This does yeah. sound kind of like Andrew Okay, Cuomo. here we go, here we go. We do think that with Donald Trump, with the Russia, Russia, and all the. Oh, my God. Is that his brother? It says no name. Like just brother. keep listening. Is just, that oh his brother? God. No, 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 no. This stuff. You should really look into apologizing and, um, you know, be a man about it. And to your, <laughs> so, uh, mostly your to your brother. You should really call your brother once in a while and tell him you're sorry for trying to outshine him. And, you know, uh, you got fired anyway. Kind of feel like you could have helped me a little bit more. I'm just saying, like, you know, you, you helped me behind the scenes. You could have put your neck out there for me on uh, CNN. Hey, look, and now I'm out of here campaigning with Trump. I look like a fucking fanook. Thanks so fucking much. Yeah, so maybe apologize and make peace with your brother. Even Trump was able to do that. <laughs> you want to be a do you want to be a smaller man than Trump? Brother taught you to be a man. He spoke. Okay, this has got to okay, be Andrew Cuomo. Okay, this is his brother, right? This is Andrew Cuomo. No, 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 I'm sorry. This is his brother, right? It has to be. It fucking has to be. More direct. He wasn't a coward. Um, you don't get that impression. I hope you um, stand up one day and be a man and, and see what CNN did to you. And you know what? And say, you know what? Perhaps I was being led. And, All right, can uh, I be honest with you? And, if... if, if, if if I got a call like this, <laughs> it would creep me the fuck out. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is a weird parasocial proof. Like, this <laughs> this is either his brother, which I'm convinced now it is, or it's the guy from the end of talk radio that shoots him <laughs> in the fucking party. <laughs> like, yeah. Isn't that guy dead, though? Uh, no, the, the guy that killed him. Oh, okay. Be a man. No shame in your game, huh? Um, what does that mean? I really and how is that think... applicable? How is that applicable to anything that it was just said? That was his brother. That, that was... was his brother. That was his brother. No one's going to tell me. I'm convinced that, Nobody, was, that, that, that was his brother. That sounded that, like his brother. It, it, was, to be. it was so personal. <laughs> it was so personal that you should check yourself before you, before you rickety wreck, wreck yourself. yourself. Uh, about talking to somebody about what makes him a man or doesn't make him a man. You literally do that all the time. All you, you, you fucking what? And also, asshole, you went on the internet, started a voicemail line, and said, "Hey guys, give me, get, throw it at me, both barrels. Tell me what you think." You did the worst thing. You yeah, did the worst like, possible thing. Let me tell you something. But if you think it makes you a man because you swallow what they're feeding you in Trump land about how everything that was done to him was corrupt. And That's not what he said. That's not what your brother said. What your brother <laughs> said was, yeah. now they're friends. You need to <laughs> apologize to your, to your mother or something. Yeah, what your brother said was, be a man, is what he said. Be a man and admit that the Russia stuff was bullshit, which it was. It was. You could actually go out there and go, you know what? The Russia stuff was bullshit. We were all fucking but You're going to deflect and you're going to move the fucking, uh, no, no, hey, I'm a man. I do a lot of push-ups. Okay, Chris. The FBI was just out to get him because they're a lefty agency. Yes. I've been doing this 25 years. I have. I'm part of the lefty agency, pal. I know. They used to call me. Now I'm out still like my brother, but I used to be in those little meetings, okay? You know, I had to bring him a coffee and shit, but like still. Like he's, a, he's in those things like a stone cutter. Where he's at the bottom like Mr. Burns. Oh, God. Yeah, that's Patience, right. Patience, Monty. Patience, Monty. But never until Trump heard anyone discuss the FBI as being a lefty outfit. Um, well, because the FBI, I will say this. The FBI isn't pretty much a left wing or a white it's wing. It's a uniparty. It's a thing. uniparty thing. So I will agree that describing it as a lefty outlet isn't right. But currently, right now, the, the party that's in power is a left, and they are, control, they are basically controlling the narrative because they didn't like Trump.
And let me tell you, you guys are only worried about what the FBI does uh, when the outcome matches your politics. You weren't upset about what the FBI was leaking about uh, when the race between DeSantis and Gillum was close and all of a sudden they started leaking about Gillum and it helped DeSantis in the race. Everybody that, that never happened. That never happened. Nothing the FBI leaked affected the election here. We live here, you fucking retard. Nothing they leaked. Nothing they leaked affected one fucking vote. As much as Trump's magic wand of sending the FBI down there for the magical uh, election irregularities that he was just lying to you about. None of that bothers you. But there were. You want me to apologize? I'm going to say this for the 50th time. I never apologize, even if I'm wrong. I'm an Italian guy. My feet are fucking dug in. I don't care what new facts are happening. I don't care what new facts come out. I'm staying right here. I'm going to stay right here. I can't be wrong. I don't think you watched my coverage, okay? I had problems with impeachment because if you weren't going to get them with something that was ugly and obvious, there was going to be political payback and backlash. I said it to Schiff on my show early on. Check it. The dossier, I took it for what the intelligence people were taking it for, just like everybody else. So what you're saying is that they are correct, that they have been lying to you the whole time, and they are corrupt, but you're saying, like, look, instead of being a journalist, I took it for face value like everyone else. Hey, I got bosses to please, yeah. which I apparently didn't because I'm not there anymore, but that's not the point. Okay? And I qualified it every step of the way, just like everybody else who was doing the job. And the idea... No, you didn't. Call no, you didn't. No, you didn't. We fucking covered you, you fucking liar. Because they didn't find a crime. You guys come in wrong. and you read One, off the teleprompter. They did find crimes. The back of that report by Mueller was filled with a number of things he felt or his team felt warranted criminal investigation of anybody else except the sitting president because of the reckoning of the Office of Legal Counsel. So I don't know why you guys keep repeating this bullshit that people feed to you. Um, because now, you literally repeated the bullshit that the intelligence agency fed you. You just said that, Chris. Yeah, because it's got the word intelligent in it. So they should and know I what's going on. And I didn't want them to think I was stupid. I'm not stupid. I'm not fucking stupid. <laughs> God, he is a fucking moron, He's the best. huh? I love him. I, I love I love Cuomo. I love that his brother's back. I love that everybody's back. <sighs> My favorite brothers. Do I believe that the investigators got things wrong and overreached and were overzealous? Yeah, that's on them, not on me for reporting it. No responsibility. He's just none. None. It's, none. No, it's, it's their job for report. I just reported it. Italian men and white women have that same, that gene. I wasn't wrong. You were wrong. Or you took it wrong. But a real journalist wouldn't just take that at face value, Chris. That's why you ne you're not a real journalist. He's making it seem like, look, the government told me what was happening, and I happily said, okay. I didn't question it. There's very... That's not journalism, you fucking moron. That's being a puppet of the Democrat Party. Whatever party, Republicans do it too. It's the same thing. You're being a fucking puppet of who's in power. Yeah. No, there, there's... He's... A lot of these anchors... Like that oh, never, he's an anchor. But the, the, a lot of these guys that never had to be a journalist. A lot of these guys just were like, like he was a Cuomo. He was like a young, good-looking guy, and they said, stick him in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And he's just been reading off a teleprompter for years. But then doing that makes them think, I'm a journalist. Yeah. Like they're out there fucking like Wolf Blitzer during the Iraq War. I don't think so, pal. Shit, and Kelsey Jones or whatever the fuck we were looking at earlier, she's more of a journalist than he is. She got the whole goddamn scoop about the kid in the Bush Gardens yeah. and the enclosure. She had to go interview that fucking guy with the weird nose, like the judge from Nothing But Trouble. Someone said I should just play the fucking scene from True Romance or just explain why he's the way he is. <laughs> that's, that's a good call, man. I, honestly, that, that really is. That, that's exactly... Well, tell me. This, this, Am I lying? <sighs> way, way to go out like a G, man. Mm -hmm. That scene's so great. Well, I, hey, that, I knew Cuomo was going to do the rest of the show. I knew that was going to fucking happen. The best part of that scene is when they when the laughing calms down, and then he just takes that, like, 
he starts like you could just see it in his fucking face and he takes that one last drag like oh man <laughs> the best part of that Done. scene is when he said oh that's a good part that was a good part he said like a lot like one or two times is fine. Like 80, 80 or 90 times. <laughs> Quinn, <laughs> Quinn Dear your ancestors. I <laughs> mean, your great grandmother. Fucked. <laughs> Dude, it was wild. That's still one of the wildest scenes ever.